Hello and uh, welcome everybody to today's Placochet webinar. We are all facing challenging times and uh, all over the world in the whole gastronomy family. Uh, what we want to go to today is I want to show you some, some solutions, some recipe ideas, some, some tips and tricks how you could use Pacochet in these times, especially in these times. One solution in closed restaurants to still serve your guests is to do, to offer takeout menus, takeout dishes, takeout business for your business. Um, this is one part to make a little money. And the other big part is to stay in contact with your customers, with your clients, be in their memory. So when you reopen your restaurant, they all remind me, oh, we had such great food in this time. So we go back to this restaurant. And then there's another thing. There is takeout food. It's not always the best in quality. And I wanted to show you how you could use your Paco Chat in preparing and serving top quality takeout food. Because this is, this is really, really important for the customers and for you as a business that they have a good memory of you, good memory of the food you serve them, even at home. So uh, I hope I can show you some solutions for you that you can go on with your business and uh, the life with it. Today, I'm gonna work with uh, Pacochet 2 Plus. Pacochet 2 Plus is our top model compared to the Pacochet 2. Here we have additionally a new blade locking system which allows us to securely lock in the pacotizing blade. And we have a programmable automatic repeat function. Uh, I'm gonna show you some uh, applications where we use the two of them today. And we also have the Pacochet CoopSet. This is the CoopSet Plus, which fits with the Pacochet 2 Plus with the blade locking system. I will do some recipes with the coop set as well. We start off with uh, a basic how to fill a beaker, what we have to uh, keep in mind when we are filling a beaker. All the recipes, what we're doing today, what I show you today, you find on the Pacochet app. Just download the app. Uh, in most regions, the app is available, Others, other regions, will follow. If you have any questions, please uh, deposit the, the questions in the chat. I will answer the questions right uh, at the end of the webinar. And if there's any more questions, you are always feel free, send us an uh, email at uh, info at pacochat.com. Then we will also answer the questions through that email channel. Okay, so we start with a mango mousse. For the mango mousse, we have fresh diced mango, powdered sugar, xanthan gum, which is a adhesive, which is a, a jellifying agent, some lemon juice, and heavy cream. We are using a fresh mango. Why are we using fresh mango? Fresh mango has uh, fibers, fruit fibers, and the fruit fibers, they give us a really nice, stable result. Through, pacoment, uh, through pacotizing, all the fibers are gone, they're filament free, but it still gives us a nice and stable re uh, result. Also with the uh, Sorbets, if you use fresh fruit in, in sorbets compared to fruit puree. If you use fruit puree, you might need to add more additives. For the mango mousse, we have the fresh mango. And then I use a little bit of xanthan gum. Only that's only about two grams per beaker. So that is just to give us a little bit more long lasting, uh, stable, result so that's only a touch. A tip here is always to dry mix 
these these kind of stabilizers with any dry with the sugar or the salt any dry goods what you have in your recipe in your recipe in order to let it dissolve evenly i use in this recipe powdered sugar uh, because it dissolves really really quickly you could also use uh, crystal sugar uh, casing sugar casting sugar uh, but that will take to dissolve a little bit longer right then we add the cream we mix it and while mixing we can also already feel and see how the gelifying agent is starting its work to do its work. The advantage of, of Xanthan gum is it works cold or hot applied. You could also use, for example, aga aga. Uh, the same is, is for your heavy for your ice creams or sorbets, for example. If you use aga aga, you need to heat up the liquid with the aga aga at 80 degrees Celsius for about two to three minutes in order that you activate the gelifying agent. With Xanthan gum, you don't need to do that. By the end, I like to add a little bit of uh, lemon juice to give the recipe a little bit of freshness. It always, the recipe always depends on how the taste of the mango is. If, it, if the mango is more sweet, you need less sugar in the recipe. If it's more acid, you need less lemon juice in your recipe. So taste uh, your ingredients first and then add the sugar and the lemon juice to taste. With the new PacoJet app, it's easy. You take the recipe and you can always adjust the recipe to your needs, to your preferences, and then just save it on your recipe account. You can even share it with the whole world if you like. So, so we add everything into the beaker. Now we just make sure there is no air pockets in the beaker. Flatten and straighten out the top surface. Yes. We make sure that the rim of the beaker is clean. And then we label it, close it with the lid and we freeze it for 24 hours at negative 22 degrees Celsius. You could also freeze the beaker in, in a blast freezer, that's possible. Uh, that way you are much faster with the freezing process and it, and it freezes more evenly. There's smaller ice crystals built into recipe to get an even better result after pacotizing. But make sure after you have it frozen in the blast freezer, Put it in a regular freezer, let settle the temperature deficit, that you have an even temperature throughout the full beaker at negative 22 degrees Celsius. Again, freezing is possible between negative 18 and negative 22, uh, 23 degrees Celsius. We recommend many, when the uh, negative 22 degrees. So the next, next thing what we do, uh, for our takeout menu, what I would like to show you is a terrine, classic preparation of a, of a terrine. This is very easy with PacoJet. You have a, always a top quality result, always the same. It doesn't matter who, who pushes the button on a PacoJet. You have always a result. It works any time you do. So for that, I have prepared a beaker, of course with uh, a chicken farce. Recipe again is in the PacoJet app. In the beaker is uh, chicken breast, heavy cream, and about seven grams of salt on the full beaker. I'm using our oh. new synthetic pacotizing beakers. For the synthetic pacotizing beakers, we need the chrome steel uh, protective outer beaker. The synthetic beaker do not work in the synthetic uh, protective outer beaker. So always make sure 
use the chrome steel one. Take the packetizing plate, put it in the splash cart. In the splash cart, there's the preliminary scraper. We attach it to the Paco jet. With the new blade locking system, it's magnetic and also screwed in. So we have 90 degrees, we have to twist in the packetizing blade. Then we attach the beaker. And now we might zoom to the display so I can show you what we have to select on the display. On the display, you see the functions. You have packetizing for frozen ingredients. Then we have cutting for non-frozen. And over here, we have the whipping, which is for the whipping disc. Both are part of the packetized coupe set. We select packetizing. We will packetize the full beaker. We see here the full beaker because it's lit in blue. We could select the portions over here, but we do the full beaker on over here. We have the air pressure. The white beaker is with overpressure and the slim beaker is with normal pressure. I would like to have my result a little bit more airy and fluffy. So I packetize with overpressure. And over here, this is the new function. This is a repeat function. You might know the repeat function from the Pacucha 2 in the whipping mode. There is the repeat function possible. With uh, 2 plus, it's in every function because we have the blade locking system. We do two repetitions and then we let the Pacucha packetize. In the meantime, you can use the, the time when Pakotet is uh, pakotizing to prep what is necessary. So we need for the terrain, we need a terrain mold. We lay out the terrain mold with the uh, clink film. So like this. And then what I really like is bacon or ham, of course. So I, I line the terrain mold with the Schwarzwald bacon. So here from the region. You could also use um, any vegetables like a leek, blanched leeks, and they're laid out with the blanched leeks. If you don't like too much bacon or uh, uh, puff pastry, this is totally up to you. There is no boundaries in creativity using your Paco Jet. So. Here we are already almost with the first repetition done. This is a perfect recipe when you have uh, scraps of meat, you know, for portioning out the meat, you use the scraps, you, you throw it in the beaker, you add heavy cream, you freeze it, packetize it, and then you have a perfect farce. There's no, there's no risk that the farce will separate or that you have to be gentle, that you have pre-freeze the, the meat first or really cool down the, the heavy cream before making the fires. You know the traditional make, uh, method of making a fires, you use a, a blixer or any kind of, of coupe machinery. You add in the, the meat, the meat has to be really, really cold, even almost frozen. And then you add the heavy cream and then you have to blend it in that accessory and the heat is transferred and you have to be careful that it will not separate. If you overdo it, it will separate and then it will not hold together when you, when you poach your, your terrain later on. And here, you don't always have that many scraps at one time. 
so bit by bit you can fill your beaker. Just make it, you, you add the, the meat, then you fill it up with the cream that the, the, the meat is covered, freeze it, and then the next layer and the next layer. So you can keep up collecting the meat scraps. This is a big advantage in, in the, um, saving food waste. Then uh, we have some some ingredients. What I'm gonna fold into the into the forest to make it a little little bit more nice and attractive. So I still have some pistachios in my dry storage. Pistachios go well with the bacon, go well with the chicken, and then I had some uh, dried morels still left in my dry storage, soaked in water, diced up roughly because I want to have the chunks. In, in my terrain, there's also a little bit liquid from the, uh, from the soaking. Inside here still, we can use all that ingredients for our terrain. And you will see with the two repetitions, what we have done with the full beaker, we can use the, the fast right away. We don't have to uh, let it sit outside for a long time that it will temper and get the right temperature to use next. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Perfect result. You, need, you see the nice and airy texture, creamy, uh, perfectly emulsified, not separate at all, uh, just perfect to use it right away. So, so on the sides, we take it out can use it right away. If I have not that many orders for my takeout, so I give my, my customers, I give them a deadline, right? So I'd, I'd say the day before until four o'clock, you have to order for the next day. And then if I know, okay, it's only six orders for my terrine for the next day, so I might do only half a terrine, smaller form. So I do half a beaker. I program five portions, three repetitions with the five portions, then only those five selected portions will be repeatedly pacotized. I take it out, I make the small terrine, and with the rest goes back into the freezer for the next day when I have more orders. And the big advantage of the repeated pacotizing is one that I have it programmed and I can do something in between, I have time. Uh, and the air pressure is not released in between cycles. So it gives me uh, even better, uh, even more dense, more more uh, emulsified, better emulsified result than when I do the rep the the single process times one at the one at a time. So then we add our morels with the juice, nice and tasty juice. We can easily fold it in. It will work. It will not harm the the farce. We add the pistachios, and then you just fold it in. You see the texture of the farce is perfectly to, to, use, to use it right away. I don't have to let it sit uh, outside on the counter to temper or whip it up uh, to temper it or add um, whipped cream. That's also a traditional met method to, to, to add more whipped cream after the farce is prepared to give it more a shiny texture and uh, perfect, more perfect to uh, for the preparation. And here you see it's 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 perfectly shiny already. There is no nothing else to add. No more steps needed. Simply and easy. Use it for the next step. So. Just flatten it out, nice and even. You see, one beaker is the perfect amount for this size of terrain. We fold over the bacon, each side, tuck. Cover it nice. This is going to give us a nice and juicy texture and incredible flavor. 
and then we line it with the cling film. And this goes down then uh, later on, or now in the in the in the combi oven steam, uh, ninety degrees Celsius, about thirty five minutes. Always depending on on you want to have the texture. If you want to have the texture a little bit more creamy with your terrain, you lower the temperature to eighty degrees Celsius. If not, you go higher ninety, then it's the result will be a bit more uh, uh, dense. Good. Since we do not have so much time today and we don't want to wait for 35 minutes, I have prepped it ahead this morning. You see, that's our terrain from this morning. Now, what is really important for the customer is how he gets his food. So there is, there's many possibilities. I'm gonna show you some. So we have this uh, to-go containers. They are, uh, I think they are recycled. You can use, uh, these are paper ones. You can use re recycled ones. You can use plastic ones. That's, that's totally up to you. Portioning, very easy. Just slice, two slices. And then there's one possibility that we just Played it like this. You see perfect texture in the terrain, in the, the forest part, uh, nice and airy, even. And then you see inside, you see the pieces of morel, and you see the pieces of the pistachios, the one we have folded in. Then serve some condiments with that. We have, for example, little uh, sauce Cumberland served in a, in a separate container. You could also use little plastic cups and then you have one space free for a uh, Waldorf uh, celery salad or something like that. Um, I, I recommend that you serve all parts separately or even one possibility would be cryowack the single orders of the terrine. So you, so you get even a better, perfect quality result for your customers. Then you give them a little, a little note, cut, up the, uh, cut the bag open, give them instructions. The people, people really, really like that. You give them instructions how they have to finish their food. Because in order that that way, you can secure that they have a top quality food that tastes good. Takeout food is not always the best quality, but you want to have your customers remembering you, you and your restaurant and the food you serve. So in order that you serve the food as possible, as good as in the restaurant, you need the help of your customers at home. Because if you heat up the soup and then you send it to them uh, while delivery, with delivery, the soup is never the same quality as you have it in the restaurant. So give them the instructions, let them work for you or with you and then they plate their own dish they heat it up with themselves at home and so they get the the perfect quality result and then they will remember your restaurant ah even take out food was great with them so i go back since when they open again first thing i go back and uh, check them out again good then next appetizer gorgonzola mousse is what i want like to show you Next, we put the terrine back. I have the gorgonzola mousse prepped ahead. This is the recipe is also on the Taco Chat app. Very simple recipe is perfect to use up any cheese what you still have uh, available of scraps of cheese, you, you mix it with, with heavy cream, little salt, lemon juice if you like. You could even add a little uh, toast if you like in the beaker, freeze it, just mix it and freeze it, freeze it in the in the beaker. And then when you pacotize it twice, you have the perfect uh, mousse. It's a nice, really a nice uh, appetizer for home, something different. For that, as a condiment, we give uh, 
red beets. I have some diced up red beets. It's like a two centimeter dices. They're raw, raw. And we do a, we do a red beet tartare. I like vegetables as, as a tartare and I like the beets rare because they, they get a really nice and healthy taste with that. You could also use um, cooked red beets, so whatever you prefer. We use with the chrome steel beaker, pacotizing beaker, we use the synthetic protective outer beaker and we use the coop set. We use the two, two blade cutter of the Pacojet coop set, important is the, the tongue to attach, to securely, uh, securely attach the blade with the Pacojet. Now we could zoom to the display because we have different steps. We select the cutting mode. Um, with the coop set, with the cutting mode, we cannot select portions because the blade has to go all the way to the bottom of the beaker in order to process all the food that is inside the beaker, of course. Um, the big advantage here is that the blade goes from top to bottom through the vegetable in that case and cuts it evenly, all the same size, and there's no heat transferred, so there's no no bleeding, no liquid loss, there is no color changing, and you get the, the even result. Over here we have the repeat function. I want to have a little smaller dices, so I go to two repetitions, then I could still play with the air pressure over here on that side. The white beaker is with air pressure and the slim beaker is with normal pressure. In that case, that will not, that would not change the result. But if you do a beef tartare, for instance, and you use a tenderloin with air pressure, as a bit over pressure, you get a more, a more fine, more moussey uh, result. And with normal pressure, the result will be more coarser. Looks more like hand cut when you, when you have the result. So in that case, it does not matter. <laughs> Again, we can now use the time while Paco Jet is working to, to do to prep what we need for our gorgonzola mousse to plate. There's a possibility of using plastic cups. They are recycled plastic cups or these uh, glass, glass bowls with lid. You have to make sure that you calculate the price into the menu if you give them the glass container or you give it them to for free because you couldn't use that nicely as a storage at home or you do like a, a refund system that's totally up to you one possibility to send it to your customer is to send the mousse the gorgonzola mousse in the piping bag send it in the piping bag to your customer and then you give them instructions you give them instructions like uh, take it out of the fridge 20 minutes prior, you use it, you, you need to use it, you need to plate. Cut in an angle the tip off of the piping bag, and then you you pipe it on the plate. Oh, you see? It's very important that you give it out from the fridge a little bit, bit a little bit sooner than I did. So it's not too too compact in the result. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Just as an idea, this doesn't look so nice. So make sure you give the right instructions to your customer that they know what to do. In that time now, our red beets 
are ready. Really nice rapid tartar in the beaker. I hope you can see that. So we marinate them right away. I have a little vinaigrette with uh, raspberry vinegar and extra virgin olive oil, some salt and cumin. We use the, we use the pakotizing beaker as a bowl. And then we take an extra container to plate it. Why is this important? This is important if I put the red beet tartare right on top of my, of my gorgonzola mousse, it will color the gorgonzola mousse. And then it, all, it, then it doesn't look really, really nice. So my advice is package it separately and send it separately to the customer. And then you give him instructions how he can plate and then he will be happy that he has a nice dish. Add some caramelized uh, walnuts with the dish, some, some greens, some leaves, whatever you desire. You could also use, instead of the glass packaging, you could cryovac the marinated red beets with this one over here. And then you just they take it out of the bag on top of the gorgonzola mousse. Very good. Next thing is soup. Soup is very nice topic for uh, takeout. Everybody likes soup and we have a lot of uh, vegetables uh, what we can use for soup. I give you an example of a Thai soup. This is one of my, one of my favorite uh, recipes on the PacoJet app. You can simply adjust adjust the, the ingredients, you know? If you use uh, galangal or ginger, lemongrass in your soup, that's totally up to you. You see nicely, you have the whole, whole lemongrass, you have the whole ginger, whole galangal, shallot onions, coconut milk, and a little chicken stock in the beaker, in the protective outer beaker, we attach the pakotizing blade and attach the beaker to the pakotite. We select pakotizing. Now we do, we have only one single order I want to show you. So we do two portions. In the meantime, we get ready with our dishes. We serve the Thai soup with some uh, canals. I call them canals. This is uh, a chicken farce. And I had some stems of coriander, coriander green stems in the farce, pakotized, and then they get the nice green color and the full aroma of the coriander. Just take it out with a spoon into simmering water, two, three minutes, and then you have the perfect ingredient to serve it with your soup, for example. Pakochet is ready, very fast. We have one portion in 20 seconds. The full beaker is less than four minutes. Take it out and now check out the result. Perfect powder. Even the lemongrass is fine as snow. You have the full aroma and you don't have to throw away anything. You can use up everything here. You take the powder and you plate it in the dish. You could also use the paper cups. That's totally up to you, right? Fill it in there. And with the rest,
you just scrape it down. Clean the, the top of the beaker and then we freeze it again and we can use it another day. Tomorrow, next week, whenever. So no, no food waste at all. And then we send them the, the canals with the soup and we tell the customer on our little instruction sheet, you add the canals to the soup bowl and it's very easy to finish your soup because it's a Paco Jet instant soup. We add boiling hot water. You give it a stir. And you can enjoy your soup right away. Make it, make it, make it simple for your customer, make it exciting. And, and with this soup, he has to work a little. It's easy to prep, it's easy to serve, uh, and it's, it's, it's full aroma. The, the aroma and the flavor is just amazing of the soup. If it's too high concentrated, you can uh, give them some extra coconut milk in order to, to put it in there, but make sure you serve him everything or you send him everything he needs to serve in his recipe. Then I brought you some more condiments you could pacotize for your customers. I have first, there's another possibility of uh, sending them the Thai soup concentrate. The powder will melt. If you, if you crack them, the powder will melt and then it's like a paste. You can send it to them nice and uh, with little space needed. Here we have red lentil spread. It's vegan with some smoked paprika. Perfect in these little jars. Hummus, classic hummus also pacotized, then uh, hummus with a little red beet. Just take a little bit of the soya beans out and add some uh, red beets to the recipe. So you see your creativity, there are no, there are no boundaries. And with this, you can, you can prep them once a week or once in two weeks, you have enough in your storage and then send it out when you need them. You, you get nice little glasses, you label them, uh, you have another Thing what you can offer to your customers in order to make a little business. We have pesto, classic pesto. You see how nice and green it is. And then we have uh, cream spinach as, as a side. And here I'd like to show you the texture. This is, this is a recipe I really, really love and I use a lot. And when you take out the spinach, you put it on a plate, you see the perfect texture, the color, uh, the flavor is just, just amazing. You send it to the, like this to your customer, tell them heat it up for a second, uh, for a second, for a minute, and then you serve it. You have the perfect quality, top quality food. And this is what is what is important. And this is what your customers wants, want to have. So they remember your restaurant. So now it's time to do our mango mousse. What we have prepared before. I have a beaker prepped already before because we need to freeze 24 hours. And now let's say we have we have only we have only one order for 
the mango mousse. Of course, we need a packetizing blade and a splash guard. Attach it, attach it to your Paco jet and then attach the protective beaker. We go to packetizing and we do three portions with three repetitions and with overpressure. While Paco Chet is pacotizing, we get ready for our for our plating. Here again, the mango mousse. We can we could use the the piping bag to to plate, or we use the the piping bag to send it to the customer. Here in the, in the martini glass, I give you a sample. That could be an idea. You write that down on your instruction sheet and say, uh, for the mango mousse, if you have, use a, a classic martini glass. I'm sure a lot of people do have a glass like this at home or any other glass. Give, them, give him ideas what the customer can do. And then you send some some condiments with your mango mousse. We have over here, this is a twill made with the coop set, sugar, egg whites, little flour, then baked in the oven, added some sesame seeds before baking. Or I have over here another twill, this is a meringue. The, ma the meringue recipe is also on the on the app, I added some uh, mint, mint concentrate, so it's fresh mint and simple syrup, frozen, pacotized, added that to the meringue mixture, thinly spread it on a, on a parchment paper and then uh, dried in the oven. This is also a really nice condiment for the mango mousse. Here we see we have the really nice result with the, because we used the fresh fruit. You could also use fruit puree, but even with the fresh fruit, with the fibers, gives us a really, really nice result. Oh. Check it out. Really nice, perfect result. Packetized mango mousse, very simple recipe. But but perfect, perfect uh, to prep, perfect to sell. Everybody likes mango and uh, really a nice, nice opportunity, a nice possibility to give them a nice dessert for them at home. We take the three portions out, what we have selected and the rest will go back into the freezer. Clean the beaker inside. This is very important because if you don't, if you don't clean the beaker inside, the lid, the lid might get stuck to the beaker, and then when it's frozen, you get you don't get off the lid. So always make sure the beaker is inside clean and the lid as well. Put it in the freezer for the use next time. So again, we can. We could use the piping bag as uh, as container to, to send it to the customer or we plate it in little plastic containers, glass container. But I think the, the idea with the piping bag is a nice one. We give them instructions and they plate it themselves. You see the nice, creamy, perfect texture of the mango mousse and how simple it was to prepare. You know, uh, life, even in these days, is, is, is hard enough. So make your life easy. Choose something easy to make and what the people like, what they can easy finish at home and when they, what they can finish in 
a perfect texture at home. So we are almost at the end of our webinar. I would like to give you a little summary what we have seen today. We saw we, we've been working with the PacoJet 2 Plus. We prepped a mango moo speaker, which we pacotized just now and plated it on our martini glass, which is easy to deliver in a piping bag. Then uh, we had the uh, Gorgonzola mousse with the red beet tartar. Vegetable as a tartar is a really nice, trendy appetizer. You can even serve that only with greens without the, uh, with the gorgonzola mousse if you have like a vegan version of the appetizer. So this is a really nice idea. Make sure you serve all the ingredients separately. Then we have our terrine, our chicken terrine with the morels and the pistachios inside. We packetized the beaker two times folded it into the, big, into the bacon and then steamed it at 35, for 35 minutes at 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, up to you. Serve it or send it out to your customers, either in the cryovac bag or in these uh, to-go containers, uh, whatever you prefer. Then we had our PacoJet Instant Thai Soup, easy to plate, easy to finish. For the people, they, they work from home for easy lunch dish. Perfect to use up uh, the, the scraps of the forest with the chicken and all the ingredients for the Thai soup. And then I showed you some condiments. I showed you the red lentil spread, hummus, red beet, hummus, basil pesto, and the creamed spinach. I would really like to thank you for your uh, attention. I hope I could give you some ideas how to use your PacoJet in these uh, difficult times. And uh, I hope to see you soon next time. Uh, all the best for your business. Stay healthy. See you soon. Bye-bye.